Now let's some, add some little radius edges to the bottom of this because this is where we'll pick the step stool up from. So we want a nice rounded, rounded edges on the end frames here. So I'm going to double click on the end frame to go into component edit mode. Now to do this I'm going to want to copy both of these edges up using the move tool and control, 3 millimeters up. I'm going to move this edge copy this edge 3 millimeters along the bottom and do the same for this far edge now with the line tool I'm going to connect that edge and I'm going to select this little edge here and this edge and copy that out by 15 millimeters and then I can delete these edges so that's going to be the extent of my radius so between this line and I'll do the same on the other side so that's the extent of my radius edge so I'm actually going to delete these faces and that edge. So there's two faces and an edge. And then I'm going to redraw the geometry in that's just been removed. Okay, so now I've put faces back in there. I'm going to use the arc tool. Click on this corner and this corner and drag out point 0.9 in the bulge and using push pull I'm going to extrude that radius to face. And just snap it to the other end. Now I've got a nice radius, but as you can see, those lines are so close together that they just look black when you zoom out. So I'm actually going to select these internal edges, right click and go hide. Oops, try that again. There we go, so now I've got a nice rounded edge on those those edges are hidden. So I'm going to repeat that process for this other side here.
Okay, so now we've got radius edges on each each end of the step stool. Now we can go ahead and just add some materials to make it look a bit nicer. To get started applying materials to the model, I'm going to go up to Window, and then I'm going to click on Materials. Now I've selected the color named material palette from this drop down box, and I'm going to pick the saddle brown color for the, my main wood. So I'm just going to click on it, click on the components, or I could hold down shift and click and that will apply the material to everything on the model. Now I'm going to give these splines a different color, so I'm going to double click on the component to edit it, and then I'm going to give those splines a, a lighter color. I'll give that a burly wood colour. So I'm just, I'm just going to click on each of these faces for the splines. And there we go, we've got materials added. Now you can obviously put any of these colours or there's wood grain patterns here you can apply it here to your model. Um, just have yeah, have a look through the, the materials that come with SketchUp. There's some really good ones in there. Now that we've got the materials on our model, we can start setting up scenes and dimensions. So I'm going to go up to Window and open the Scenes Window box. Now there's no scene set up in this model yet so this is all blank so I'm going to create a scene by clicking on the plus arrow the plus icon and that creates our first scene so you can see it's added a tab up here for a scene one I'm going to right click in the scenes window on the scene and go show details now I can rename this one to be a isometric view So now I'm going to go up to Camera, Standard Views, and hit Isometric. Now I need to hit the arrow button here to save that view, or update the view. So now every time I want to go back to that Isometric view after scrolling around or zooming in and out, I can just click on this, or on the tab, and you can see it saved that view. So now I want to create another view and I'm going to call this one Front View. Again I'll go up to Camera, Standard Views, Front. I'm going to also turn off the perspective in this. I'm going to put it on Parallel Projection because we'll be putting some dimensions on this one. So I'm just going to hit the Update View button again and then hit Update. Now I can switch between those two views by double clicking or using the tabs. Okay, so let's get started adding some dimensions to our model. To add a dimension, we go up to Tools and click on Dimensions. And then to set the dimension, we click on a point, move your mouse to another point, click, and finally click to set the length of that dimension. If you click again on the dimension, you can reset the position of the text. So I'm going to show a few dimensions on this view for the length and height. Now if I don't like the arrows or if I want to change the font of these dimensions I can go up to Window, Model Entity and then click on Dimensions. Uh, in this window we've got um, options to change the font size, the font, we can change the endpoints to slashes or arrows or none and we can set the alignment of the text. Now I've, I've changed all these settings, now to update the, the, the dimensions I've already drawn I need to go select all dimensions and then update selected. So you can see that's changed the endpoints to slashes. Another way, way to change an individual dimension is to do the select tool, select the dimension, right click and then go to entity info. So all of those same options are in here but this will just change it for a single dimension. I'll draw another dimension showing the thickness of the 
these legs and you see I'll have a bit of a problem with the text clashing with this other dimension so I'm going to right click on that dimension and go text position outside end so that moves the text out of the way so it's not clashing with the other dimension I'm going to add a few, couple more dimensions to this view and doing the same thing with the text position I'm going to set this to outside start and now that I've got some dimensions on there in the front view that's great but if I switch back to the isometric view you see all those dimensions are still visible so I want to hide those in this view so I'm actually going to select my isometric view then just pick all of these dimensions I've just drawn right click on them on one of them and select hide now if I update this view you can see I'm given a bunch of options for properties to update. So I'm just going to leave them all ticked, but the one we're worried about here is the hidden geometry checkbox. If I hit update and then switch back to my front view, you see all of those dimensions come back in this view. Switch back to my isometric view, they're all hidden again. I'm going to repeat that process to create a couple more views here. I'm going to create a plan view or a top view. I'm also going to create a left view and then I'm going to create a detail view on one of these corners so I can dimension the splines and the mitre so I'm just going to zoom right up in it and then I'm going to add a new view and call it corner detail Using the hard geometry on those dimensions is a great way to set up a scene if you're only going to have one or two scenes in your model because it's quick and easy. The problem is now if I add a new scene for a plan view or a top view of our model and I go camera, standard view, top and update that you can see those dimensions are still showing there you can't really see them in the top view that well but you can see there's, there's something there now it's going to be a bit of a pain to go through and manually turn these off for every, every different view I have so manually selecting each one, hiding and then updating the view so an easier way to manage this is to actually use layers so I'm going to go up to window and open my layers dialog box with the layers dialog box open I'm going to click on the plus symbol and I'm going to call this layer front view dims. Now that's created another layer which I can put objects or geometry on. So I'm going to select those dimensions I've drawn in the front view. I'm going to right click on one of them and open the entity info palette and then I'm going to open or change the layer to front view dims. Now you can see there's a visible checkbox next to each of the layers because I've just moved those dimensions onto this layer. If I turn that visible checkbox off, they disappear. So this is how we're going to manage the visibility of these dimensions for each of my new views. So I'm going to double click on my plan view and I'm going to uncheck the visible for that front view dim and I'm going to click the update view button. Now I'm going to uncheck all of these boxes except for visible layers and then I'm going to click update. So now you can see the, the layer pops back on in the front view and then turns off in the plan view. We've already hidden them in this isometric view so we don't need to repeat that. So now I'm going to go through and create a few more views in this model.